it's not true. Yeah, I have no, it's like I pushed the button to switch scenes and it just like froze. Yeah. Very strange. Okay, folks. Are we back? Sorry, guys. My apologies. You said you had stopped recording. Did you start I again? did restart the recording, yes. Okay. All right. Sorry about the tech difficulties, everybody. Whew. Um, okay, so I'm going to make clear to you, my friends, uh, the nature of the battle that you are about to be engaged in. So, here's the deal, okay? And your characters in, in game understand what I'm about to say. Uh, you know that you're stronger than this guy and any of these guards individually, right? They don't really pose a threat to you. Um, hang on, I gotta move a thing. They don't really pose a threat to you, actually. Um, per se, right? Like what you are fighting for is not can we the heroes just violently take out these people. What you are actually going to be dealing with here is how well you can protect the people of Loki. Their opinion of you is what is at test. So the stakes are pretty different from any of the other fights that you have been engaged in, okay? Um, so these different blue and red and yellow lines sort of represent different, um, segments of the crowd. Okay. So if you look very closely, you can kind of see here at each side, uh, there are like phalanxes of guards kind of moving in on this crowd. Uh, so that is just sort of representative of, a, that's not a representative of like individual guards. Essentially in this fight, the guards will be treated as a swarm, okay? So it's gonna be a single stat block for a big group of guards, okay? And there are also, however, there are these guards that you see popping up with heavy crossbows pointed in your direction uh, on top of these roofs, as well as uh, Ezek, who is uh, who just shouted for the guards to attack? Everybody together so far? Yep. Yeah. So, um, basically, what's going to happen as this begins? And you guys have rolled initiative, and I need to put everybody on the initiative tracker. And we need to say what our initiatives are. Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna just remove all of this. I'm going to add initiatives for all of you. And we'll do Ismark 2. Okay. And then we'll add. I'll do the. Okay. I'll do the swarms of guards on. Uh, instead of trying to do people like one at a time, I'm going to do a single initiative for all the swarms of guards. Um, a single initiative for the uh whatever the, the the crossbow men and then an initiative for uh the big guy uh hang on everybody a little bit of bookkeeping we got to do also ash uh, would you roll for your I did. dispensation okay excellent okay um and i got to roll for okay so what did everybody get i have to put your initiative in manually starting with wandris Wander's got a seven. Seven. Ash. Eighteen. Eighteen. Cass. Uh, uh, Eleven. Eleven. Peta. Uh, Twenty. Twenty. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, I need to roll for all of these guys. His mark. Okay. His mark got an eleven. And then I'm going to roll for all the rest of these guys. Oh, that, hang on. It'll take me a second to get through them, everybody. Uh, 
Okay. Alrighty. Okay, so what's going to happen is at the beginning of combat and then at the end of every turn, and this is going to be... Uh, we are going to... Whoop, did it work? Yes, okay. So at the end of every turn, we are essentially going to uh, add up how much damage you guys have done to the guards, the, specifically the swarms of guards attacking the crowd, uh, and any other actions that you might take to aid the crowd, okay? Um, we'll try to be factored into that. Versus how much damage the guards have done to the crowd. Uh, I'm, I, there you are. Okay? And based on those numbers, uh, there will be a contested persuasion and intimidation check. So Ismark will attempt to persuade the crowd. Isaac will attempt to uh, intimidate the crowd. If you guys do more damage to the guards and or find other ways to help the crowd and protect them from the guards cracking their skulls, then Ismark will have advantage on his persuasion checks. If they, if the guards do more damage to the crowd, then you are able to kind of protect them then Ezek will have advantage on his intimidation check, all right? Each of these crowds will have a morale rating ranging from negative one to positive one. So as we start, uh, Ezmark is going to make a persuasion check, DC 12, uh, for each one for each group in the crowd. If he's successful, their initial dispensation starts at plus one. If he is unsuccessful, it starts at minus one. Everybody with me so far? Yes. Kind of. <laughs> okay. Basically, what we're doing is we're tracking how effective you guys are at protecting the crowd from the um, bad guys. Listen, we hit the bad guys, pick up the morale balls, yeah. and uh, as long as it doesn't hit zero, we win. Sorry. Lost Kingdom Hearts here recently. That's... No, it's all right. That's that's basically it. Um, <laughs> Just make sure to pick up the orbs. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. So what that all means, right, is that um, we're going to roll some persuasion checks for Easemark right now. Okay? So we're going to start with the left and then the center and then the right. And he doesn't have advantage on this, but he's making DC 12 persuasion checks. 23 makes it. Left crowd is at plus one. Uh, middle crowd, that's a 13. That's successful. So middle crowd is at plus one. Right crowd is at 10. That is a failure. They stay at zero. Okay. So this has a couple of implications for you guys. Um, at the end of the combat, we're going to like take the moral morale state of the entire crowd and add it up. And whether you guys are positive, negative or neutral, you're going to have like narrative ramifications. But during the fight, there are going to be sort of terrain based ramifications for trying to move through a crowd based on whether or not it is positive, negative or neutral. Okay. So a positive crowd is going to do everything they can to help you. They're going to try to like get out of the way and let you guys through and not hinder you in any way that they can. So that is not considered difficult terrain when moving through it. They're going to try to part to let you guys do whatever it is you want to do. Um, crowds at zero morale are neutral to you guys, are beginning to fall to confusion and panic. Those crowds are considered difficult terrain as they're kind of prioritizing their own instincts of panic um, versus any inclination to help you. Crowds at negative one have fully fallen to chaos and panic. They are more afraid of the guards than they are supportive of you guys. So crowds at negative one morale are considered difficult terrain. And any PC who begins their turn in a crowd that is at negative one morale has to make a DC 14 con save or take four D6 bludgeoning damage and be knocked prone. On a successful save, you take half damage and are not knocked prone. Also, if you move through a crowd at negative one morale, you take one D4 bludgeoning damage per five feet of movement. Right. Jeez. And you can understand like the crowd is like as they're like pressing yeah. and, and freaking out and, and trying to move, but they're basically being penned in. There's nowhere to go. Um, so 
Those are the mechanics. Question. Yes. My question is, you have said that the guards are swarms. Yes. So does that mean if, like, I cast a spell, like Guiding Bolt, uh -huh. I am aiming at a swarm, not a particular guard? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, however, these sniper guys on the roofs, they are considered individual guards at that point. Um, and you can see they're kind of taking aim at you. They don't appear to be getting ready to shoot into the crowd, right? It seems like what, and you guys would ascertain this pretty quickly. Also, I'm going to tell you this guy back here is not really here. He's just here for my bookkeeping. So you can feel free to ignore that one. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, you feel like they're going to try to take you guys out them and Strotsny are going to try to take you guys out while the while the guards deal with the with the rabble right so the test here is how well can you balance keeping yourselves alive from the snipers and helping save the crowd from the guards right any other questions that we has before we get start and feel free to you know stop and ask me questions as we go i have I, a quick one yes oh, go ahead no go ahead these tokens in the middle is that for bookkeeping for the crowds yes correct those are bookkeeping okay. for the crowds because that's where i'm going to track where their morales are at gotcha i thought so but i just want to make sure they look a little creepy what? i'm going to let you guys see where their morales are because you would know oh it's there okay hang on okay hopefully you guys can see that if you have any questions on who's where let me know Okay. Okay. I will also tell you that combat is going to end when Ezek is defeated or retreats. Okay. Which so is that's, the, the bad dude, right? Yes. Ezek is this guy right here. Gotcha. Yep. So I know there's like a lot of different kind of mechanics, but basically what we're trying to replicate in D&D &D is a crowd of jackboots uh, beating the shit out of a bunch of people at a rally while snipers try to kill the leaders of the political dissidents. So um, this is a fucking real ass <laughs> game of D&D. &D, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, hey, you guys are the ones who were like, let's have this Mark make a speech. <laughs> <laughs> so that all having been said, my dear I mean, friends, let me make sure like everybody like is. Mickey Mouse, though. Yeah, that was you guys. You sound like Mickey Mouse <laughs> all the time, right? Isn't that how you? That's like go, watch the last episode. That's how you guys sounded. Oh, that was the whole. That was the whole thing. It makes sense. Okay. All, all right. right. All of that has been said. Oh, another thing, I will tell you, the only mechanic that is going to influence advantage or disadvantage on those persuasion checks that are happening at the end of each turn is going to be the damage dealt to the guards and the damage dealt to the crowd. Okay, so you can't give Ismark the help action or anything like that. Any other class abilities that you have that might be able to influence like numerically, like inspiration or guidance or those kinds of things will be allowed. But like help actions, enhance ability, stuff that grants advantage, spending inspiration, none of that will work. The only thing that will work is for giving him advantage on that is going to be just the raw damage output. Or if you guys do other things, if you try to like heal the crowd or other stuff like that to help the people that I will influence. Um, anyway, you get it. So hopefully we'll pick it up as we go. Starting mm. with PETA, the snipers pop up. Isaac demands that the that you guys be dispersed, but doesn't let you disperse. Uh, they seem like they're getting ready to do some real damage. What would you like to do? Um, <laughs> I, so, um, I would like to cast, um, let's see, oh god, <laughs> um, I'm gonna cast Shatter, okay. I think, um, is there a reference you could provide to me? <laughs> um, yeah, so basically any, there's big groups of guards at the east, south, and west right so like any and and each of those sets of damage are going to be calculated individually if that makes sense gotcha i'm um, um, sorry no i meant um like for oh, the, uh shatter the, the spell. spell gotcha yeah. i'm sorry nope you're good uh i believe yes shatters right there blammo all right you should have control of that token yes you do perfect awesome 
Okay. Let's see. Okay. All right. This is so... all homebrew, so please forgive me if it's a little <laughs> wacky. I'm doing my best to replicate something wild here without it being a total drag. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cast uh, Shatter. Okay. Um, right there. Okay. Uh, and that is going to be... Is that the uh, right hand? Is that the right size? Yes, it is. Okay, it's, great. Is it? Uh, okay. Wait, is it's it? a 10-foot radius sphere. Okay, I think... Which I don't know that's, if that's 10-foot. Ten, that's a 10-foot radius right there. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I was yeah. wrong. That is a 10-foot radius. Oh, no, you're good. So, uh, yep, I'm just going to cast it right up there. Okay. Um, and going to cast it at third level. Okay. Um, Damn. All right. Uh, make it easy right here. Okay, so uh, con saves, DC 15. Great. Yep, DC 15. Uh, okay, con save. He's not proficient. Uh, Isaac succeeds with a 19. Okay. And then we have crossbow snipers. I've got two of them. I'll go left and then right. They're not proficient either. Left fail. Uh, left succeeds with a 16. Right fails with a 6. Okay, so uh, 16 damage in total. Uh, okay. And then uh, 8 uh, halved. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Eight or, sorry. Uh, right. uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you minus sixteen. So you get the sense. And do they move or anything, or just does the damage? Uh, I think it's just I the damage. I think right? it's just the damage. Um, ha, cha, 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 cha. Let's see. Creature, yes. Okay. Blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you launch this uh, this shattering spell and this concussive force blast them. You can tell the one on the right is hurt more by it than the others who kind of brace themselves. Uh, any movement or anything else? Bonus actions. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give um, uh, ass uh, bardic inspiration. I'm sorry. Did you um, say you're gonna give ass bardic inspiration? No, cast. Yes. Sorry. Cass, I thought, okay. Yeah. I couldn't tell if you said ass yeah. or ash or cast. I was like, yes. wait a minute. <laughs> okay. We about to, cast we about bardic to cast inspiration. The real thunderclap here. <laughs> oh hell yeah. Pam Pam, which said she also heard ass, so I'm coming back. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Uh, any movement from Peta? Um, I, I, I'm gonna move up right here. Um, I think okay. that's really. Oh, just... I will also say, guys, you can't really see it that well, but there is like a small fence, kind of fencing in the steps, uh, which okay. just factors into how you're gonna move through the space. You can jump it very easily; it's not that bad. But just to let okay. you know that that there is like a fence there. Um, I'm just gonna move. here here for now okay. and gonna leave it at that okay ash you're up okay just real quick mm -hmm. the right uh grouping is at neutral which means it's difficult terrain so it's just harder correct. to move through there's no damage being taken correct there, yeah right? damage is only gonna okay. occur and when they hit negative one and real panic starts to set in but the only torn here only problem with this with the neutral folks is just difficult terrain okay because as basically as they stop, play. like the you know they're not parting to let you through, you can have to muscle through it. Gotcha. So I basically have no range. I, this is not a fight that was designed with my <laughs> skill set in mind. I will tell you. Like I have a bow. Not my shining star. Yeah. Okay. Sure. But you got that nice armor. Brand new. I, I did buy some new armor just for the occasion. You did. I knew we were gonna have to take on a. Police state. Um, <laughs> I, listen, when I knew, whenever I uh, we let Pixel ride it, I knew what this was going to turn into. Um, <laughs> I might have a little bit of knowledge there. I think that I'm going to cut straight down the middle. Um, okay. I think that we're going to go for this grouping of guards that are jammed between the buildings here. Okay. Um, I think that I can get there with my. What is it? It's been a while since I've done combat as a rogue. This is bad. Uh, you can take a bonus action. Dash, your cutting dash, action. Yep, yeah, cutting action dash. So okay. I think that gives me just enough to get there if I've measured correctly. Uh, that gives me a little bit yeah, more you, actually. Yeah, you got, you got plenty. Okay, so I'm gonna push to the the very front. Of, oh God, I gotta get my arrow back. Sorry. Yeah. Right here. 
kind of encouraging people to, you know, get to cover as much as they can along the way. Okay. And we are going to flip my bad boy. This okay. is this is merely for you know storytelling because I know we're just attacking the one guy, but for a little bit of uh, descriptive flair, we're gonna yeah. flip my blood blade into the cleaver form. Love it. And start mowing down some. What'd you call them? Jack boots. Yeah. 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 So you push up. You see these folks with heavy tower shields. Okay. Do you want to use any inspiration, or are you sticking with 13? I'm assuming that means I'm this. Oh, so yes, I'm going to use that inspiration. I can't let the throw roll. But... Yeah, I mean... There's, there's not much I can do. It's... God damn it! Oh, 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 oh. It's fine. Rip. Uh, yeah, so you rush up, and these guys are... They're just... It's a big phalanx, and you're having trouble getting them pulled apart enough to, uh, you know to get your attack through to really land. Okay. So did he use his inspiration and it went he worse? Did. Right? He I did. He did yeah. use his inspiration. So Ash is out of inspiration. Okay. Uh, that's your movement, your action, your bonus action. I think that's it for Ash. That's all I got. Okay. Cass, you're up. All right. So let's see. This is the guy that we actually need to kill, right? Yes. Combat ends when this guy is uh, killed or flees. But you're doing a balancing act between if you lose the protection of the crowd before, you know, then they're all going to say, like, well, you guys can protect yourselves, but can you protect us, right? And so there will be political ramifications yes. for you and your crew. But, yes, that is the guy. This bluish guy here uh, is the the big bad. All right, bet. So I'm going to burn 15 feet of movement to here, edge okay. of the steps. And then bonus action, Misty Step, which, you know, 30 feet to here. Okay. And then... My man. Uh, <laughs> I'm a punch him in the schnoz with my longsword. <laughs> All right. Uh, 20. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 20 hits. Okay, I'm also going to burn a smite at level two here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and roll my damage. Okay, so 14 slashing before okay. the smite. So I'll take the 14. And then, okay, so that's going to be a total of 20. Okay. All right, yeah, you uh, you land a smite. Okay, and it's not over yet because extra attack. <laughs> <laughs> Second, first, same as 24. the first. That hits. Burning another smite at level two. Okay. Pulling out all the stops. We've been itching for a combat for another a while. Is that another damage? max damage? Jeez. Come on. Okay, there so that's going to be... There we go. Look at that. Yes. What, <laughs> another 24. <laughs> Holy shit. Beautiful. Ouch. Yeah, you've landed a, a hefty chunk of damage on this guy. Uh, and he... I'm just going to look at him and say, instead of using your guards... Fight us yourself. Uh, and he's he sort of cracks his neck, stretches his, and he has this big, weird, misshapen, like demonic arm. And then in his other hand, uh, oh, is he undead? No, he's alive. Oh. Uh, in his other hand, he has a big battle axe, and he says, <laughs> "Gladly." Uh, however, at the end of your turn, he's going to use one of his villain actions. As you hit him, uh, and he yells, CHARGE! Once again, and all of his guards are going to make attacks against the crowd. Uh, and they are going to deal. I'm going to go left to right. Do blue, yellow, red. That was the same every single time. Okay. Uh, each crowd takes 43 damage. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch these around a little bit so that you guys can kind of keep track. I'm going to give you permission to see all of the uh, bars for all of these guys. Uh, and I will track you. Oh, no. Actually, I just need to track their damage and you guys' damage on those guys, which is a different thing. The crowd does not have uh, 
specific hit points values. There's no, there's no, like, the crowd isn't going to die. And they are hitting them with clubs and dealing non-lethal damage, right? But that also the, feel somewhat better. <laughs> the guards also don't have set hit points, right? Um, you know, it's, it's not a thing where you guys can deal enough damage to actually kill the guards. Right. It's the morale. However, there thing. may, based on how much damage you do to the guards over time... There may be some changes in... It's like a swarm, right? So, you know, if you do a lot of damage to these guys, they might be less effective at what they're doing uh, in terms of, you know, beating people up. Oh, hey, Pixel, real quick. Sorry, yes. didn't mean to interrupt. It's all good. Uh, I didn't realize on my character sheet it didn't upcast the smites, so those were first-level smites. So oh, I'll okay. just yeah, save yeah. my level twos. Okay, I got you. That works. Okay, so... Each one of the crowds has now taken 43 damage from the uh, from the guards in their respective areas. I can't believe they all rolled the same. And that was not the guards' turn. That was Ezek using a villain action at the end of Cass's turn to give them a free attack. Uh, that brings us to Ismark. What does our boy Ismark have? Does he have any ranged weapon? He has a heavy crossbow. Great. Good for him. He is going to... Um, oh Lord, uh, he sort of, uh, looks at PETA and just says like, oh shit, this is going badly. Uh, and he just sort of raises his eyebrow, sort of like, what do I do here? Um, he can I, shoot I, a group of guards. He can shoot one of the snipers. He can shoot Isaac. Uh, what do you, I, I would, uh, I would point out one of the uh, groups of the guards and be like, okay. shoot at shoot at those guys. All right. Well, then he'll back up uh, Ash shooting the southern guard. Um, make a heavy crossbow attack. 21 hits for eight piercing damage. Okay. Now, I need to track both how much damage you guys deal to these guys in a round and how much damage you deal total. What am I doing for total damage on the other ones? <clears throat> green. Okay, so guards' total damage is going to be in their green box, and their round damage is going to be in their red box. And that's just how it is. Okay, great. So he deals eight damage to the guards south of uh, Ash. He can't do multi-attack because uh, he has a crossbow, and those can't be multi-attacked with. That brings us to Wandris. Okay. <clears throat> some of what you're talking about with the boxes and things that I don't get, so help me if you can sure. as we go along. But this is what I think Wandrus is going to do. First thing he is going to do, realizing that Isaac is the major problem, is he wants to cast his uh, spiritual weapon okay. um, and have it hover over um, Isaac. Okay. Okay, so he's going to cast spiritual weapon and hover it over Isaac and his uh, spiritual okay. weapon is um actually that purple flower with the huge thorns yes. so in addition to what else is hanging there. over is it that purple flower with the huge um things now do okay. I, have to, I just have to cast that right been a while uh you make an attack roll you make a you make a spell attack roll i think it's okay. a melee spell, I make a spell with the let me find it down here the spiritual weapon okay that is a 19 to hit that hits Um, and let's see, it's, it's two D8s at level five. So what does that mean? It like, am I casting it at level two? Or? Um, it is a level two spell to begin with. So that's the lowest level you can cast it at. If you upcast it, it'll do more damage. One D8 per level above second that you use to cast okay, it. I I'm going to start with just the level two. Okay. Now, once it's cast, you would have to cast it again to up the level. You can't choose later. Like, oh, now I want it to do more damage. You have to spend a whole new spell slot. But it um, does say 2d8. So does this automatically do the 2d8s in... Yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, so oh, that's wait, 17. No, it's, that's yes, seven... it is 2d8 because you have Blessed Strike, and apparently that accounts for your spiritual weapon. So, yes. Oh, wait a minute. I, I'm sorry. I was doing the wrong thing. I was looking at the two D8s, but that's the sacred flame. Okay, spiritual weapon. Okay. Okay, so this is it. Seven radiant, ten, um... Okay. Ten force. Force, okay. Okay. All right, that's and your bonus after, action. That was my bonus action. After doing that, I want to leap 
over that little fence you're talking about and move into the blue crowd. Um, I don't know if it can be the full 30 feet or if the jumping over the fence takes some. Um, however, no, we'll let I it be. Get... Yeah, they're, and they're a positive one, so they're not difficult terrain, so you can move as far as you want over there. Okay, so I'm going to... Whoops, now i got to get to move. So Wanderers is plunging into the crowd and saying, be still, be calm. It will be all right as he goes through. And then he is going to launch a sacred flame at the uh, guards on the right. Guards? Uh... I don't on know the far if left, the left. Okay. guards on the left. All right, I was like, I don't know if you're in the range of those. Well, guys. they would actually be on Wanderers' right, that, that and that's why I said that. that I'm sense. sorry. Okay, deck right. save coming at you. Seven's not going to do it. Roll damage. Okay. You go back to this. It's the sacred flame. Okay, uh, fourteen altogether, right? Eight. Uh, the eight radiant from Blessed Strike doesn't count, so it's just the six, because that went off on your sacred... Uh, okay, so that's weapon. six more damage on those, and again, Wanderous is trying to make himself as big as possible, even though he makes he knows that makes himself okay. a target from the guards up on top to seem as <coughs> strong as he can to the group okay. that he's in. All right. Now it is time for all of the crossbows... Uh, you see all of the crossbowmen kind of like lay down just at the edge of the roof, so they are all all going to go prone. Uh, we'll use this for prone on all of them. And they take aim. All right here. Okay, and then to make sure everybody knows, we're gonna put a big red X on this guy. So we know he's not real, not a real boy. Okay, uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight attacks with advantage coming for Easemark. They wanna take out the ringleader. Okay. Uh, number one, miss. Number two, crit. Uh, for we're gonna do twelve damage there. Uh, let's see. Number three, I believe that misses Ismark. It does. Number four, miss. Number five, hit for nine damage. Number six, crit for twelve more damage. So Ismark takes three shots. Thunk, thunk, thunk. Uh, can I sentinel the one right next to me? Yes, you can. And Hell you have advantage yeah. because he's prone. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> That's a 14. Uh, 14 does not hit. Oof. Okay. Okay. Did I? Oh, I missed some. Okay. This guy hit for... Th okay, so actually five of these guys hit, and I just missed a couple of them. And that's another crit for, oof, 20 damage. Okay, Ismark is uh, looking, like, almost dead. He went from, like, great and hale and hearty to absolutely scranked in a single round. Uh, those snipers are some mean business, friends. Um, um. Okay. Uh, but that is their turn. They can't move after they take aim. That brings us to Ezek, uh, who chuckles to himself and is going to make uh, two attacks with his battle axe uh, two-handed on Cass. Um, number one is a nat one. That doesn't hit. Number two is 17. I don't think that hits either. Nope. Okay. Um... Next is the Swarms of Guards' actual turns. How much damage has been done? These guys have not taken more than 10 damage or anything. Okay, so uh, they all get to make a second set of attacks against the crowd. However, the middle Swarm of Guard is going to... Some of the ones near Ash are going to uh, stow their clubs and pull out spears. Um, so I'm going to... So three of them... Three of kind of... Th 
of the like some of them in the front within the first five all within five feet of ash are going to go for attacks against you which is which it sucks but also is less attacks that will hit the the you know crowd yeah. so you're soaking up some damage there okay uh so the first group on the left deals an additional 47 damage uh to the crowd the second group is uh, only going to deal 19 damage to the crowd in the middle uh, they are also going to make three attacks on uh, Ash Um, I've got a 14 to hit. Nope. 20 to hit. Yep. And nine to hit. Nope. Uh, four. So you take four damage as one of them gets you with their spear. Uh, and then the one on the right. Uh, hang on. Deals 38 damage. Uh, so they just deal a tremendous amount of damage as they're pushing in, shoving people with these shields, battering them with these clubs, uh, and the crowds are beginning to uh, feel pretty significant effects. People are bleeding under the cobblestones. That brings us to our first persuasion check. This round of combat, uh, all of the crowds have taken a lot of damage uh the left crowd has taken 90 damage the middle crowd has taken 62 and the right crowd has taken 81 uh the guards have only sustained eight damage on the left and six damage on the right uh but Isaac has taken quite a bit he's taken uh, almost 70 damage this round or something um with that it means that Isaac is going to make three Intimidation checks with advantage, and Ismark is going to make three persuasion checks regular. So we'll do uh, Isaac first. I'm going to go left, middle, right, and these all have advantage for him. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, I've got a 19, a 17, and a 24. Ismark is making his persuasion checks straight, left, middle, right. Got a 16 fails and two sevens fail. So each crowd begins to lose some cohesion. Uh, the two middle crowds move to neutral and the right crowd moves fully to panic. They are at negative one. PETA, back to you. Um, oh boy. <laughs> um... Uh, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and um, cast uh, move over to Ismar, cast Cure Wounds. Okay. Um, I'm gonna do it at uh, fourth level. Okay. So let's do that. Okay, so in total, 19 points of healing okay. uh, to Ismar. Gotcha. And then I'm going to go ahead and give, as my bonus, uh, Bardic Inspiration to... Uh, going to give it to Ash. Okay. Um, this is reminding me, not that we're going to change it now, but Cass, you do have Bardic Inspiration. So oh. that, that miss that you had had on the one guy, um, <laughs> you might have been able to. But it's fine. You have it for next time. Uh, uh, so Ash, you have Bardic now. Oh, he said Cass. I thought he said ass. Right. Yeah, I'm sorry. My mistake. <laughs> ass has Bardic Inspiration. Uh, okay, so Ash has Bardic Inspiration. Ismark has been healed for 19 health. Uh, anything else from PETA? Um, I'm going to stand in front of Ismark. Okay. Um, and yeah, that'll be my turn. 
Okay, all right. Ash, things are looking grim. The crowd is starting to lose cohesion. You're seeing people being uh, buffeted around you as the uh, guards are pushing inward. What do you do? Okay, so we're going to bonus action uh, steady aim. Okay. So that will give me advantage. Yes. And then we're going to go for another cleave on these guys. We got to start. Okay. I'm putting all my faith in Cass up there with the big dog. That's 24. Okay. 24 hits for sure. Okay. And that will be 11. Okay. Um, you get sneak attack on this because the neutral crowd still counts as unfriendly to the guards. Crowds at negative one won't grant you sneak attack. Oh, you also have sneak attack because you have advantage. So, okay. but, but we'll go ahead and do the 11 damage. And this is, okay, so at, sorry, real quick for myself, at the beginning of each round, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reset. Oh, it's green, okay, hang on. I have to keep track of this. So all the green bubbles for everybody reset at the end of the round. I'm doing it. Whew, huh. I gave myself a lot of bookkeeping to do. <laughs> okay. I do get, uh, no, I don't, Never mind. Okay. And then okay. these guys take 11 damage. So 11 goes in the round one and 11 more goes in their cumulative one. Okay, great. Uh, and then hit me with that uh, sneak attack. Uh, so funny story. I don't know how to do that. Um, if I click on it and it's this, okay. Uh, yeah, it's like a global modifier, but just you can just roll the D6s. Uh, Okay, what is it then? It's four uh, d six. Okay. Yeah, another fifteen. Okay. So that is fifteen more, and fifteen more here. Okay, so you start uh, slashing into these guards, and you do actually see some of them start to go down. Um, and at this point, now that you've done enough, I'm going to reveal that if you every 25 damage you do guys do to the guard they are going to do one less damage dice of damage to their given crowd uh there's like guys pushing in but it's just like as you're you know as you're causing damage to them they're becoming less effective at what they're doing so <laughs> um no movement because of steady aim i think steady aim is it a bonus action to also do that it is bonus action so uh that's Movement bonus action and attack. That's it for ass. Ah, that's it for ass. <laughs> <laughs> now back to Cass. <laughs> that's it for Ash. Now back to Cass. <laughs> okay. I'm at Nisik again. Okay. Pulling fast. 24. Hits. Okay. Now I'm going wow. to burn my smite actually at level three. Okay. So that's going to be a, okay. a 12 slashing. And I'm just going to do the 3d8. Okay. That's going to be, so 25 total. Okay. All right. Then extra attack. Oh, wait. Damn it. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, bro. Uh, so that's an at one. Uh, yeah, I'm burning inspiration there. Okay. There goes cast inspiration. I did get mine back earlier, by the way. Oh, my gosh. Spin it. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a 19. 19 hits. Okay, and also, can I add that Bardic Inspiration to damage? Yes, oh, because I have a Valor Bard. Yeah. So. Uh, okay, how much, ooh, how much extra is it's that? It's a D8. It's a D8. Okay, so I'm just... Okay, so let's see. Flashing. Okay, so that's 12. Okay, okay I'm going to go ahead and do the D8 for the Inspiration. So that's a 3. Okay. And then another 3D8. So Jeez. that's going to be okay. 27... Okay. 30. Okay. He is now starting to look pretty rough. But I will tell you, if you end the fight with no positive morale from any of the, or with net negative morale from the crowd, the people are going to think, this, these guys can't even protect us from the old Burgermaster's lapdog. How are they going to protect us from Strahd? So that, and you guys can choose to do that. If you look at the math, you're like, there's just no way. That is, you know, feel, but like, I'm just letting you know to be strategic about the choice of when you end this fight, right? Um, oh. Which is not to say you shouldn't keep wailing on Isaac, but just as a group, right. think about it, right? 
So, okay. Um, Cass, once more at the end of your turn, Ezek is going to bark another uh, order uh, as he this time screams, FIRE! And all of the crossbowmen are going to take an additional attack. So the four in the middle are going to go for Ismark. Um, and the two on the outsides are going to go for uh, Cass and Wandress, I think. Uh, and I'll say, I'll give a plus two to AC for Isaac, for Ismark, since you're standing directly in front of him, Peta. So yeah. I'm going to start with two attacks on Wandress. Uh, they are still taking aim because they're prone. So two attacks with advantage on Wandress. I've got a 14 to hit. That hits. And a 20 to hit. That hits. Okay. So that is 10, 22, 25 piercing damage to Wandress. Uh, four attacks with advantage coming for Ezek. But with a plus two to AC. Uh, no, those all hit. 20 hits, 21 hits. That's a crit. 25 hits. Okay. Uh, so that's eight. That's... What is that? Uh, 13? Okay. Ezek is down. As he falls, the other two are uh, actually going to come in at PETA. Uh, so let's see. That was a crit. So that is 5, 10, 16. No, uh, 5, 10, 26. 26 damage to PETA from the crit. Yeah. And uh, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11 damage from the last attack. Okay, so Ismark is down. Uh, Peter's taking a bunch. Wandress. Can I sentinel the one next to me again? Yes, you sure can. All right, we'll try this again. Nat 20. Oh, <laughs> critical. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's 18. Okay. I'm not going to burn a smite or anything on okay. this one. All right. Wandress. Okay, Wandress, first thing he's going to do is pop off the spiritual weapon over Izzy, because what else would he do? And I just lost okay. my character sheet. Where did it go? There we go. <clears throat> so, spiritual weapon, I just do the damage, right? Or do, no, I have to do if I hit uh, you him. Attack. I gotta... Yeah, you make a melee uh, spell attack. Did that do it? It's a 26 to uh, hit. Yes, 26 hits. And that... Um, mm, I think that we're going to punch that up to um, a level 4. You cannot do, do that. Unless you, want to, unless you want to burn a level 4 spell slot and recast the spell. But you've already rolled, so I can't okay, really so let you... It, it, it would be at a level 2. I see what you're yeah. saying. Okay, so that's 16. Because it's like persistent, right? Okay, 16. Okay. okay. All right. And then being concerned about the people around him and the amount of damage mm -hmm. that they are taking, instead of trying to punch him again, then Wanderous is going to aim a guiding bolt now because that's... Okay. Spiritual weapon goes off. It doesn't really take a spell. He's going to aim... A guiding bolt at the uh, the people, the soldiers that are attacking his side of the crowd, and okay. having remembered that he has blessed strike, if he if I cast damage, I get to do an additional one d eight radiant damage. Okay, did you want that radiant damage to go on Ezek because it rolled it automatically? I can give him back four hit points, or 
uh, I could put it oh, on these wait. Oh, guys. so that's so I that automatically does it? Yeah, it's like a global damage modifier. It's like a checkbox oh, on your okay. sheet. Oh, okay. No, then if it if it okay. went against him, that's fine. Cool. I just wanted to be sure. I wrote it down so I just wouldn't forget to do it. But you're telling me it automatically does it? Yes. If so that box okay. is checked on your sheet, it automatically does it. Okay, so I am aiming a guiding bolt at the soldiers that are pushing in okay. on the blue people. Make an attack roll. That is a twenty-one to hit. Twenty-one. Oh, for sure. For sure hits. Did I do the damn? It didn't roll. Okay, let me try again. What do I need to do with you guiding bolts? You click where guiding bolts is in the chat box. Okay, so it would be at a level one. Can I pump it to a level two? Not have... after you've already rolled it. Rolled and it. We know I can't that it seem to learn yeah, that. Yeah, okay. just if you if you want to upcast it, declare it before you roll. Okay, um, so that's uh, is that twenty two? Like I think it is. Uh, well, that four radiant from blessed strikes doesn't, but eighteen is gonna go. Okay, so 18. Thank you. Okay. All right, and their cumulative... Ooh, 24. Brutal. Okay. What? What? The, the, the guys that you just hit cumulatively from the 6 you did last turn and the 18 now have hit 24, and their threshold to start losing dice is at 25. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, that brings us to the snipers. Uh, at this point, I think they are all going to turn and start shooting at Cass because you are the clear threat to their boss um, as their boss is getting absolutely scranked. Uh, the one next to you is going to stand back up and is not going to use a crossbow. The rest of them are. So I'm going to do seven advantage crossbow shots and one... Uh, and. <clears throat> Two attacks with a short sword. So, one, two, Why three, would they four, have five, advantage? six, seven. Uh, they have an ability called take aim. If they're prone uh, and have not okay. moved, then they have advantage. Okay, Let's I got see. you. I thought it was okay, because one, of elevation two, three, or something. Four, five, six. I need one more. Uh, seven. And then two short sword attacks. Okay, let's go through these. Uh, first attack, 25 to hit. Hits. Second attack, 19 to hit. Hits. Third attack, 25 to hit. Hits. Fourth attack, 22 to hit. Hits. Fifth attack, 19. Hits. Sixth attack, 16. Misses. Uh, next is 17. Misses. And then these don't have advantage, so I've got a 22 and an 18. For the short sword, for the guy next to you. All right. Uh, Wait, is, what were those again? The last two are a 22 and an 18 from the short swords. Uh, one of them hits. One of them hits. Okay, so what is so? Uh, let's see. That was hit. That's hit, seven hits. Hit, hit. Oh, where are we? Okay, hit, 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 miss. On the sixteen, then hit, then hit, and then miss. Okay, whoo. Uh, I've got sixteen on the first hit. Okay. 12 on the second hit. Okay, so 28. Okay. Uh, what is this? 13. 41. Uh, yeah. Uh, 16. 57. 10. 67. Uh, 7. 16. Uh, 74. And 6. 80. 80. Okay. <clears throat> You're just low-level guards. They don't pose a threat to you. <laughs> well, the guards really don't. The snipers on the roof, on the other oh. hand. <laughs> pretty nasty. Well, what are you going to do? Got to protect the people. Okay, that brings us to Ezek. Who is going to uh, make two attacks? He does not have advantage. Okay, I've got a 15 to hit. Misses. And a 22 to hit. The 22 hits. And that is 16 slashing damage. I am unconscious. Okay. Seen that coming. Yeah, I did. Right. you. Uh, I should do that on this one, too. Okay. Uh, the swarms of guards. One of them has taken more than 25 damage. 
uh, the rest of these are going to make their uh, damage. So the first one deals 45 damage to the crowd. Which crowd? Uh, the left crowd, where Wandress is. Um, what am I using for what here? Okay, this is their morale. This is their damage. So that is bam. Middle crowd is going to... Three of them are attacking uh, Ash, and the rest are going for the crowd. So that is going to be three... Oh, actually, the first attack, they're going to attempt to separate Ash from the crowd and pull you into the swarm of guards. Uh, they're going to make a grapple check against you. Uh, you can make a uh, athletics or acrobatics check. Uh, they are they they rolled a nineteen. Yeah, twenty three. Twenty three. Okay, so you were able to slip away, and you do not get pulled into the swarm of guards. That takes the place as like three of them try to grab you. That takes the place of them hitting you with spears. Uh, the other ones are going to get uh, much less damage, I think. Uh, than they would uh, otherwise would have. Uh, the rest of them are only able to deal eight damage to the crowd in the middle. Okay, and then the group on the right. Uh, deals 38 damage to the crowd. Okay, and that brings us to the persuasion segment. <laughs> Ismark is down. So uh. all of his persuasion rolls will be at disadvantage unless he would have had advantage <laughs> and that will bring them up. Uh, I'm surprised, I'll have to say. <laughs> okay, so the left group, you guys have done 18 damage, but they've taken 45 damage. So the left, left group, Isaac has advantage on. The middle group, you guys have dealt 26 this round versus eight damage. So you have advantage on that group, but Ismark is unconscious, so that's going to be straight. And then the right group is uh, disadvantage. I'm going to do these one at a time to make it maybe easier for me to keep track of what's what. So, Isaac uh, is going to make his first intimidation with advantage against the left crowd. That's a 21. Is Mark is going to make his persuasion with disadvantage against the left crowd? That's an eight. So they drop to a negative one. Um, the middle group is a flat roll from both. Isaac makes his intimidation. That is an 18. Is Mark makes his persuasion. That is a 16. They also dropped a negative one. And then the right group, Isaac has advantage versus Ismark's disadvantage. Brutal. So that's a 19 versus an 18. Oh, man. Uh, but they can't drop below a negative one. So. Pita. So you said healing um, may influence the crowd? Yes. Oh, and this is the end of the round, so everybody's round damage is resetting. So let me go ahead and reset that. Yes. So uh, healing for the crowd will influence, um, like, the basically the rolls. Okay. Okay. Um, for persuasion and stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna cast healing word on the crowd on the right. Okay. Um, as my bonus action. Okay. Uh. And then I'm gonna do uh elder uh blast. Okay. Uh, how uh, much uh healing? Uh, so go ahead and roll oh that yeah. Oh sorry. Ha <laughs> I should do that first. Um. And then, uh, oh, sorry, I'm going to also cast this at second. Um, okay, so yeah, So this is going to be... Okay, so that's going to be in total 10 points of healing. 
Okay. So, gonna do that, and then I'm gonna cast Eldritch Blast to get two uh, beams, and I'm gonna cast it at the guards on the right. Okay. Uh, yeah, 20 hits. That is 20. Okay, so that is the first one. And uh, second one. That is also... Oh, that's going to be 18. Max hit. damage on both. Damn. Yep, so nice. 20 damage to the guards on the right. Okay. Um, and... Yeah, I'm going to move a little bit back. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think that's going to be my turn. Okay. Uh, Ash, you are beginning your turn in a negative one crowd. Please make a constitution saving throw. As the crowd fully devolves into panic and people start pushing and shoving to try to get away from the guards. 19. 19 is a success. You are not knocked prone. And... You take... Uh, 10 points of bludgeoning damage as you were buffeted by the crowd. Oh, things are dire. Okay, so double movement through these guys? Yes. Also, you through. take bludgeoning damage for every five feet you move through them. It's not a lot. It's 1d4. Okay, so if I were to burn my bonus action dash, could I get up on this rooftop is my question. Uh, make a perception check for me, please. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. So it's it's taller than you can easily jump. You do see that around the backs of these houses are ladders that the guards had snuck up and placed so that they could climb up easily. Um, but it's not going to be easy to just, like, I mean, maybe with a good enough acrobatics or athletics check, you might be able to get up from the ground um, to, like, kind of parkour your way up there. Uh, I'm going to say with this situation, with the crowd, it'd probably be about DC 20 yeah. to do that. Um, but if you can find a way to get around the back of one of the houses, uh, you could just climb one of the ladders, but that's a pretty long way. Yeah, I'm jammed. I don't know what to do. Like, cause we're at the point now where it almost, it's, it's not going to go well for us with the crowds because we could take out Isek and just be done with this. Yeah. And maybe save Ismark and uh, and Cass and, and everything. The crowd's going to be pissed off. Yeah. But like, what good am I just sitting down here chopping away at the guards when there's nobody to really rally the, the crowds at this point? It's a tight spot. I feel like my time would be way better used to, to attack the snipers, but I can't get up there. And backing up to the, to the church steps is also not in my best interest because I'm going to have to work my way through a crowd that's pissed off. Yeah. Well, all right. This is what I get for not being a casty boy like everybody else. Um, We're not doing that great, sweetie. Don't feel well, I just mean I have no range to really make things happen is what I guess I'm getting at. But you do have the guards right in front of you. Can he not make a melee against the guards in front of him? Yeah, that's kind of what I was working through is that's really my only option because if I try to run away, I'm going to get hurt. If I, I can't... I don't think that I'll be able to climb the building unless I get super lucky. I mean, I, to be fair, my athletics is pretty high or acrobatics is pretty high. It's It's eight. But I'd have to get I'd still have to be pretty lucky. Yeah. Yeah, not great. We're gonna we're gonna do uh steady aim, get myself advantage and okay. clock these guys. It's twenty five. Twenty five hits. Uh thirteen. Okay. 
Okay, this. What? Uh, did I not reset these guys at the beginning of this round? I think you said you did. But... This is the but this is the first time they're getting attacked this round, right? I think it, it is. is. Okay. You <laughs> also have my bardic inspiration die. Uh, which is in so, that D8, right? Uh, D8, okay, yes. So that's so. minus 20 here. Why not? Might as well oh, burn it. Minus cause... 13 more. This is minus 20 here. Then minus 13 more. Okay. And another three. Okay. Whew. That's 36 okay. damage to the guards, anyway. Yeah, so they have taken a pretty significant amount of damage there. Uh, okay. Okay. Cass, I need a death saving throw. I thought that was going to be a nat one there. <sighs> uh, ten is a success. So that's one Yay. success. Is Mark. Death saving. I guess I just. Nope. 1d10. No, 1d20, Pixel. Oh, the... that's oh a God. Six. Okay, so that is one fail for Ismark. I gotta find a place to track these things on his sheet. Okay, uh, death. Oh, no, let's put him in the GM. Okay. Death saves. Uh, six. Sorry, guys. Successes. Failures. Okay, that is one failure for Ismark. Okay. All right, Wandrus. Okay, Wandrus still has his spiritual weapon on Isaac, and he first thing he does is pop that sucker off. Okay. Oh, also, you hit these guys with the guiding bolt. That is a 20 to hit. 20 hits. For 15 points of damage. Okay. Uh, He's in very bad shape. I'm glad to hear it. I think... Given the whole situation, taking out Isaac is, uh, you know, like our only shot. Okay, but help me with this pixel. Uh -huh. I have prayer of healing up to six. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Before we go any farther, um, please make a constitution saving throw, Wondrous, for not for uh, concentration for or anything, but for just being crowd. in a hostile crowd. Yeah. Okay. That is a seven. Okay. All right. You take 12 damage from being in the crowd as people push and shove and try okay. to flee. Okie doke. Okay. Uh, you asked me about, about prayer of healing. Okay. I have prayer of healing. And that um, is up to six creatures of your choice that you can see within range. Look at the casting time on that. Like it's like 10 minutes or something. Oh, I gotta do 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay, well, that, um, that was things, such a good like idea. You, you might have mass cure wounds. You might have mass healing word. Uh, I have, um, that... well, I have spare the dying. That's a touch. So you'll have to get to one yeah, of them. Yeah, to one of them. Okay, let me see. No, I don't have healing word. This might be a silly question. I don't want to talk out of turn here, but do you still have that wind wall thing that you have that you did before? Yes. Okay. I was just curious. Would that have been something I could have used if it wasn't? No, I, I just, I just yes. remembered it from all that. If you threw wind wall up somewhere, it would stop the snipers from being able to shoot arrows through wherever you put it. Okay. But if I use mine, I can't do mass healing word and that correct. also. Yes, that is correct. So I think it'll be over before that. I'm sorry. But if I don't, the mass healing word up to six creatures of your choice that you can see, I can do that. My question is, obviously, uh -huh. I can see Isaac and I can see Cass, I feel like. Uh -huh. Can I or can I not see Cass? Yeah, you can see Cass is up on a roof. So, yes, you can see Cass. Okay. But um, what about anything for the crowds? Uh, I mean, they're just considered one big, large creature, kind of like a swarm, like the guards. Can you see somebody who's hurt in the crowds to hit? Oh, yeah, for sure. Would that help? Yeah. Right. So, you know. If they're within range, whatever the range is on that spell, then it yes. Is 60 feet and that kind of okay. goes to catch enough of them. So yeah, then uh... I think that 
and that okay i've done this my spiritual action yeah damage, you could hit all three of the crowds from here yeah okay if the spiritual to. damage the spiritual weapon damage uh -huh. is not even a bonus action is it it just goes uh, off no it's a bonus action yes okay so then i can't do mass healing word no <laughs> okay then i'll throw up the wind wall somewhere and see if i can stop the snipers because okay. there's nothing else i can do yeah so wind wall can be i think 50 feet now wait a minute long or something I, I yeah it's always prepared wind wall uh 120 feet the ground at a okay. point you choose within range so if i line okay. it up um all the way across the buildings well, I don't really have it's 130 this. feet so i might okay. not be able to get two of the snipers but i might be able to okay you tell me i can have 123 to wind wall yeah you could run it it is going to push um yeah it's gonna leave yeah. uh it's gonna leave some of my guys on the wrong side of it like if i ran it across the top of the building it wouldn't get chaos or maybe okay, maybe that would be 120 it. feet right there and what does that do to Cass who would be in it well what does windwall say uh i i don't wings are off the building <laughs> you can shape the wall in any way you choose so long as it makes one continuous path along the ground the wall lasts for the duration when the wall appears each creature within its area must make make a strength saving throw there's no mm. Yeah, I think Cass would take damage, 3d8 bludgeoning damage, which would not be enough to kill Cass. It would give Cass one failed death save, and I would say would blow Cass onto the ground in the crowd where she might be trampled. Unless somebody can heal her. Oof. So. Can I wind it? It says one continuous thing, so can I not um. wind it around Cass? Yeah, you probably could. Hang on, let me... It might leave a sniper out of the thing. Help. Yeah, let me... Uh, let me You're better with figuring that, that out. Okay. I, I mean, I wouldn't want to kill Cass, okay? I mean, I definitely don't want to kill Cass. Oh, you know what you could do? <clears throat> Instead of putting it there, there, you could put it... If you dropped it on top of them, Ash might end up in it instead because it just goes up from the ground, but because the houses are there... You know what I mean? Hey, what kind of shape is Ash um, in? Would I know? But if you just do just... it, <laughs> fine. Yeah, if you did that, and then it, what I would do in that case, based on them whether they make their save or not, uh, is have them roll to see which side of it they get flopped onto, and some of them might get flopped into the crowd, which would be bad for them. Uh, and, but and then if they flop onto the other side, they can't shoot you guys through it without like right. getting off the roof and moving so um i'm gonna say let's do it because we're in okay. dire dire straits here so wander stands up tall um now i did the spiritual weapon thing right i've already done yes, that and that's my bonus action so my cast is wind wall okay so uh that is going to be what con saves deck saves okay strength let me go saves. back and it's look at it again i'm sorry Okay. Um, a wall of strong wind. You can make the wall up to 50 feet long. Oh, wait a minute. This is 50 feet long. Ah, 15 feet long. Okay, okay, so that's different. That's that is 50 different. feet long. You have I was to looking pick... at the casting distance and yeah, saying 120 feet. You have to pick feet. which group you want here. So, oh, actually, I got I to gotta measure. Okay. You could get... 40 feet would get you Ezek and all of the guys on that side. It would leave these ones you know, undone, but yeah, but also save Ash. Or you okay, could, let's do you could Izzy, get the other ones. It's up to you. Let's do Izzy and everyone on their okay. side and it leads it leads Cass out. Okay. So I'm okay. gonna cast it that way. All right, so All that right, you know, is let's going go back be, and see. You roll three D eight bludgeoning damage and I roll strength saves for four of those guys and Isaac. Okay. And you already read that and you know three D eights is all I gotta do. Okay. 14. Okay. And that's all of them. That's Isaac. What also. is your DC? It is 16. Isaac fails. He takes how much? 14? 
14. Okay. And then the... Uh... Crossbows, one pass, the rest fail. So this guy passes and he only takes seven damage. The other guys take the full 14. Okay, is that a, that's concentration, that like lasts, right? Yeah, up to a minute, okay. Um. I'm going to say that they don't just stay. It blows them up. I'm going to say they fall to one side or the other. So, uh, let's see. I'm just going to have them roll kind of high or low. Uh, or even, we'll do evens or odds. Evens is going to be away from the crowd. Odds is going to be towards the crowd. So, for Ezek, uh... The one guy, the second guy, the third guy. Uh, so this is how many in a row? One, two, three, four, uh, five. This will be the last one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Ezek is evens. I said evens was... Does anyone remember what I said two seconds ago? Nope. Damn it. Well, we'll just decide again. <laughs> we need to replay because somebody clipped that. Somebody right. in chat. Is anybody in <laughs> chat now? Um, I think I said evens was towards and odds was away. So Isaac is blown towards the crowd and lands, and you can see uh, he is dead, and he lands on the roof. Uh, He's these, dead. We killed Isaac. You, you just killed Isaac. You did. Uh, this Hell one is yeah. odd. This one is Thank odd. This one suggestion. is even. This one is odd. Okay. Well, that brings this combat to a close. As they see Isaac's body tumble lifelessly down into the crowd, true panic sets in. The crowds see that Ismark is down, you are wounded. The guards also see that, but they see Isaac dead. The guards disperse, and the crowds begin to flee through the city. Uh, they don't seem to currently do anything to you. They all just want to get away from there. Uh, but the guards that remain disperse and the rest of you folks are left to decide what to do. Um, I'm going to heal uh, Ismark. Okay. I'm um, going to just cast Cure Wounds at first level. Okay. Um, Wondrous is going to race for Kaz. Okay. Whatever uh, it takes. 12 points of healing to Ismark. Okay. Uh, yeah, Ismark sort of sputters to consciousness. Uh, Wondrous starts racing for Kaz. I don't think it's too hard to get there. Um, Kaz sort of like with the wind wall nearby just sort of is eventually buffeted off of the roof just in time for Wondrous to catch her. Okay, and the only thing that Wondrous has pr that would help is to do the prayer of healing. Okay. Um, that's gonna, Cass is gonna make enough death saves before that can, like, you need to heal Cass with something that takes an action and then cast prayer of healing if you have it. Because, okay, I don't... or a bonus action. Because oh, I have the, it's like a wait, 10 the minute, mass healing, the mass... Yeah. Well, it's a, bo a bonus action, and we're yeah. out of... But can I do mass yeah, healing Yeah, we're word? out of initiative, yeah. You can do mass healing word. Okay, I'll do mass healing word for everybody that's there, okay? You know, all of yeah. us can get okay. mass healing word at this point. Um, and that's a D4 plus my spell modifying, which is 8, so I'm going to roll a D4. Okay. That's one plus eight is nine points of healing okay. for Cass everybody there, gets nine including myself. Of healing and everybody else nice. also gets nine more. Okay. Ah, thanks for that. And then I think Wanderers is sitting there on the roof, kind of just holding on to Kaz, propping Kaz up and sitting there breathing heavily and looking around and realizing that things did not go well. 
Could've and it's back to worse. the planning board. Like he looks at Kaz and says that when Kaz comes back to consciousness, Kaz Isik is gone. But the yeah. crowd's against us. I think they'll come around. I mean, you gotta think most of them aren't used to fighting. Not anything like this. I understand I, their terror. That guy was just a bully. There'll be a vacuum now. The leader is gone. There may be someone in that group that will try to rise against us, but it'll take them a little bit of time. Meanwhile, yeah. Strahd is still there. He is. How's this, Mark? Yeah, uh, you look over uh, to the steps. Ismark is just kind of like sitting on the top step next to Peter there with his head in his hands. Uh, bloody, looking pretty demoralized. I think that Wanderers would help cast down off the building or between the two of them. Um, gathering up ash as they go and we would head for the church yeah i know you said that there was a bunch of civilians wounded are there any still like around that can't get away or um no it seems like people have gathered them off the street uh what you notice that is extremely um kind of uh it takes a minute for it to set in what it is that's different but all of the townspeople who originally were staying in the church as the crowds have filed out have left. So it is you guys and Ismark. Uh, Irina is there. Uh, and I think after some time, having heard, you know, of what's going on, some of your other allies might show up as well. Good. <sighs> so do we go into the church or do we return to the tavern I would think we wouldn't go back to the tavern afraid we'd get in trouble on the way I mean, I, don't I know. guess. Um, I guess I would check in and ask his mark. Um, it, where where do you think we should go? I mean, it's. Uh, I just don't know where to even start. I don't know. Andres <sighs> looks around and he says. Ismark, your speech was right. Without hope, these people have nothing. And tonight, they don't have hope. But this is not over. They have seen us not save them. But they have also seen us remove Isaac. I cannot imagine they're going to chase us to the castle of Strahd. They're ter more afraid of Ta Strahd than they ever were of Isaac. This is a setback. But does it really change anything? We had hoped for their support, but our path is clear. We must move forward. So, um, as your remaining allies gather around you in the church, getting word through the grapevine of what happened, um, what do you guys decide to do? Do you decide to stay here at the church for the night? Do you decide to go back to the inn? Go into the mansion? What do you do? Uh, 
Um, I think it'd just be safest um, if we go to the mansion. Um, I, I guess, like, I, I just don't want to have, like, any type of, like, of the crowds, like, come back in retaliation of, like, what happened. You know? So, that's just my fear. Um, so, I think it'd be safest in the mansion, ultimately. And Mark and Arena and the, and the young boy from the church, can they all be in the mansion? Yes. Then I think we, we would gather them up and take them with us. Um, Erwin Mardikov asks, uh, I think the mansion is a good idea. If you truly feel reprisal from the people of the town, where will you put it? Where do you think it will be safe? They cannot harm you while you are there, but... If, do you want to open the door to God knows what in the morning? Is it even wise to stay here in Vlaki? Perhaps you should... Yeah. I mean, I, I think it... I think we may just have to leave the town, unfortunately. I mean, at least, like, uh, go on the outskirts, um, at the very least. Um, I, I don't know what what you guys think, Ash. Wondrous is right. Regardless of what happened here today, it doesn't change what our next step is. It's true. I say we... Obviously, there's going to be no storming the castle tonight, but if if we can't win over Velaki, then there's no reason to be here. We might as well pack our bags and get ready for the end. Yeah, I agree with that. The only thing I fear, if we leave, it looks like we ran away. If we don't make it clear that we are following our path. It looks like we ran away. If we leave someone here to tell our story, will they be safe? If we take them with us, how do we keep them out of danger? I think we must ask our allies and we must have a consensus of a plan that will keep us safe and the people as safe as they will let us keep them. So, um, we are approaching the end of our time here tonight. Uh, a consensus on where uh, it sounds like the the mansion and gathering all your allies there so they'll be safe uh where would you like to try to put the mansion do you want to put it somewhere in town do you want to leave the town walls and put it somewhere uh, i'll reiterate again nothing can get into you to into the mansion that morden canaan doesn't let in himself um so if you go outside the town walls you know normally that would be dangerous but you guys can be safe and you know that because you've spent a couple nights outside the town walls of places with him in the past uh in the woods i think wanderson's point is not to disappear without some kind of a notice that lets the people in the town know we're we are undeterred mm -hmm. in our plan to continue so if anybody any of our allies had a plan of how to accomplish that do we leave a sign on the church i don't think we can leave anybody behind at this point like if we yeah. leave this mark and arena behind i don't know if there is a danger church notice board but I yeah. say we pin something up there. Sure. And just say, hey, we'll be back. Or, yeah, yeah, I mean, just. Um, yeah, I think Erwin tells you that he would like to go gather his family and board up the tavern before they come join you. Uh, and he and, you know, Morton Kanan discuss an area outside of town where you will be reasonably safe. Yeah. Um, so you guys head that way with Morton Kanan. And uh, Erwin rushes off to board up the tavern. And um, you guys are beginning to settle in at the mansion that night. 
when you hear the sound uh, downstairs of the door opening, does anyone go uh, to sort of like help uh, Erwin and family sort of bring their stuff in or anything? Yeah. Who uh, who goes downstairs? Uh, I'll I'll go. I think that Wanderers would definitely go, being big and strong. If he is assuming that's what it is. But I think he's fully armed and he's very mm -hmm. careful and I'm not sure that he totally sure. trusts anything and anyone at this point. So anyone who goes uh, downstairs to help the Martikovs bring in their uh, various accoutrement, uh, you see in the distance now that night has fallen that Velaki is burning and you smell the smoke blow into the door of the mansion as you bring things inside. And the door closes. And that is where we will end our session for tonight. So. Whew. Well, everybody. <laughs> I have been Pixel. <laughs> Your dungeon master, your jackbooted thugs, your snipers on the roof. Uh, and yeah, uh, we're going to do our usual sign off here, reminding everyone who we are and where we can be found on the Internet. And uh, we are going to see if there's anyone who's live that we can go raid, although it is very late, so there may not really be anybody. Um, but that having been said, there's a page. Hello, friends. I've been Vince Page. I've been Ash Fireforge. You're changing rogue. And, uh, yeah. I stream. I've not streamed this week. I've had a, some serious uh, health issues going on. Hopefully we'll get those sorted out. I'm hoping to be live tomorrow. Uh, but we do the, the live streams on Twitch and TikTok. You type in my name, B-Y-N-C-E-N-T-P-A-I-G-E, -E, you'll find me on both of those. I've about forgot how to spell my own name. I want you guys to know that I had to think really hard about it. So, uh, I feel that, uh, Omega. Uh, Hey y'all. My name is Omega. I played, um, Pita Walhorn, the Valor Bard. Uh, you can find me, uh, pretty much, uh, pretty much only on TikTok, And I haven't even been posting that just because life has been insane. Um, but it's Omega MT 42, um you can find me there but yeah all right uh ozzy i'm ozzy i played cast fireforge tonight and i am depressed <laughs> <laughs> oh no yeah i hear that uh bonus mom hi i am bonus mom and tonight i played wanderous the nature domain cleric and i am not depressed and i will tell you why when you play the game of Dungeons and Dragons, while it is a game and it is exciting when the adventurers race off into the unknowns and against unbelievable odds, persevere and cover themselves with glory and everything looks wonderful and bright, even in the midst of someplace as dark as Barovia. But if it were easy to save this land, Strahd would have been gone long ago. And the reality of the situation is when you play Dungeons and Dragons then you are playing a game that sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. We lost tonight. And it sounds like the people of Morovia Barovia lost tonight too. But that's one step along the way. And in the tradition of all good adventurers, Indiana Jones and Robin Hood and uh, Zorro, we are going to continue. So join us next time and see what we pull out of, well, I'm going to say our hats. You might want to say we're going to pull it from somewhere else. But do not despair because two weeks from tonight, we're going to be rolling that dice again. And we hope that you will be here. It was lovely being with you tonight. See you next time. All righty, folks. Well, after that uplifting message from Bonus Mom, I have been, <laughs> as I said, Pixel, your uh, dungeon master and, um, you know, 
all around bad guy tonight. Um, you can find me here on twitch.tv if you can stand to look at my face or to hear the sound <laughs> of my voice you, after this. <laughs> uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash hammerpixel where I will be uh, helping bonus mom instead of trying to kill her as we play Elden Ring. <laughs> you can also find me here next week uh, for Descent into Avernus where I play as I said before, a Phoenix Bright Grin, number one, internet sad dad and dwarven barbarian piece of crap. Uh, where I'm sure that Doc Robert has nastiness in store for me, uh, equivalent to what we've had for these folks tonight. <laughs> I will get mine one day, you can rest assured. Um, thank you guys so much for watching for this thing that we do. Uh, anyone, know anyone we can go raid? Well, there is Dream Streams, and there is Jojo Bean playing Diablo 4 and Killing Floor 2, and someone Dungeon Degrees that are playing a, a Dungeons & Dragons game. Okay, well, do you guys have any preferences on those things? Uh, anyone in chat have thoughts? If not, uh, then I will just make a decision. Okay, they say anyone's good. Uh, okay, well, uh, someone in chat says Ream Streams. Okay, yeah, we'll go raid them. Uh, if you are subbed, there's a raid message. Or there, if you're not subbed, there's a raid message. If you are subbed, there's a raid message, my friends. Um, yeah, so thank you everybody for watching for this crazy thing we do on Friday nights. I appreciate you all. Uh, and we are going to go raid Ream Streams. We will see you next time.